This video shows you the mounting scheme I came up with for this ICOM 9700 VHF UHF radio in my Ram Rebel truck. Let's roll to the intro and get into the video. Hi, this is Bill the Techno Gypsy. In this video, I'm going to show you how I mounted the ICOM 9700 radio in my Ram Rebel truck. The first question I'm sure most of you are asking is, why? Well, I needed to support 1.2 GHz mobile operation along with standard 2 meter and 70 centimeter. The 1.2 GHz mode will allow me to utilize the data mode in D-Star thereby giving me a 128 kilobit per second data communication capability. So, I looked around for a radio that could support 1.2 gigahertz to work in conjunction with my existing D-Star 2 meter, 70 centimeter rig. I happen to have a couple of the older ICOM 1200 radios and tried to buy a newer version. These are small, nice looking rigs that would be pretty easy to mount in a vehicle. It turns out that these radios have been discontinued for quite some time. The only radio I could find that supports 1.2 gigahertz operation is the new ICOM 9700. The 9700 is a beautiful radio. Let's take a look at this bad boy. It has a direct sampling receiver for 2 meters and 70 centimeters and uses a down converter for the 1.2 gigahertz signal path. This design, along with ICOM's digital signal processor technology, results in a very quiet receiver, which is great for weak signal operation. Let's look at some of the capabilities of this radio. Covers 144, 430, 440, and 1200 megahertz. Supports CW, AM, SSB, FM, and RTTY modes. Supports D-Star, DV, and DD modes. Real-time spectrum scope and waterfall display. D-Star terminal and access point mode. Dual D-Star receive and Ethernet port and USB audio and control connection. These are all great capabilities, but the power output of this rig is pretty amazing. The radio can output up to 100 watts on the 2 meter band, 75 watts on the 70 centimeter band, and 10 watts on the 1.2 gigahertz band. That is a whole lot of capabilities, especially if you intend to use it in a mobile environment. Let's roll outside and take a look at the interior of my Ram Rebel. This is the interior of my 2019 Ram Rebel. As you can see, it's got a beautiful dash that's very well laid out. The interior is very well laid out but there's not a lot of room in here for any type of radios that you'd put into the vehicle. You could do a more traditional radio where you'd use a remote head capability on a standard mobile, and you could possibly mount it up here on the dash, maybe use a vent holder or whatever. My needs dictated that I needed to use the IC7900 because I needed to support two meter, 70 centimeter, and 1.2 gig for data traffic. So that became a problem because this is the size of the ICOM 9700. It's the same size as the IC7300 HF rig. But turns out that when I was looking around in here trying to figure the problem out, there's this space here between the two seats. I think it was originally designed for holding a notebook computer or laptops or whatever. But it turns out that this is exactly the size required to sit that radio in. 
I'm going to have to custom fabricate a mount for it, but it shouldn't be a problem. Probably raise it about one inch to open the ventilation down at the bottom for the fan. Possibly tilt it a little bit. But this will be a very nice mount that looks very nice in this vehicle. With the standoff, you still pull out the cup holder. You still have your two cups, but now you have full access to all the controls on the radio. So let's head back into the studio and I'll show you the fabricated mount that I had made and we'll start to go through the process of installing this into my Ram Rebel pickup. I had this bracket fabricated out of stainless steel and then painted it flat black. The radio mounts into the bracket using the four existing mounting points and I had the base of the bracket made larger to support the vertical orientation of the radio. This also allows me to easily screw the rig into the bottom of the center console in the truck. One of the problems with this mounting method is that the radio must have all power and antenna connections installed prior to mounting in the bracket. I used two 45 degree in connectors and one 45 degree PL259 connector for the antenna cables. I connected the 2 meter and 70 centimeter antenna cables into a MFJ916B duplexer. This allows me to use my existing single mobile antenna. The 1.2 gigahertz antenna is a separate antenna. In the Rebel Antenna video, I will show you how I installed a three position RF switch along with polyphaser nuclear EMP protection into the antenna paths. The RF switch will allow me to feed the 2 meter 70 centimeter output to an external antenna such as a tripod mounted base station antenna if desired. Let's head out to the truck and get the bracket with the radio installed. All right, now that we've got the radio into the bracket, let's put the bracket into the console area. Helps get the microphone out of there. Set this up. All the cables will sit back here for a minute. I'm going to use standard self-starting screws. And we have this mess of cables that I'll end up mounting, or actually take this mess of cables, put it underneath the center console here, and then we rot them out into the back of the vehicle. But as you can tell, with the microphone is all here, it's a very solid bracket mount. This is my uh, tuning control and all of my other controls are here and it is set and mounted into my Rebel pickup truck. For my astute followers out there, I am sure you are thinking, how in the world is he going to power this radio from the standard alternator slash battery in the vehicle? Well, short answer is, I'm not. This is a teaser picture of the 200 amp hour battery system that is going in the truck to provide power for the radio and other accessories. I will cover that in another video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you like the content, please subscribe to my channel and check out the Technog page on Facebook. This is Bill, the Techno Gypsy, saying 7-3 and God bless.